welcome to this week's CSP Download. I'm Lydia and I'm the Children and Families Minister at Chalfont St Peter's Parish. In our first two episodes, we looked at how God made his amazing creation, the world, and Adam and Eve to live in it and look after it. But then, in our story last week, things went wrong. Adam and Eve didn't listen to God and chose to do the wrong thing by listening to the sneaky snake and disobeying God's instructions. Well, fast forward several hundred years and things were going badly wrong in the world. Since Adam and Eve had broken God's instructions, everyone was doing it. People were hurting each other and God with their awful behaviour. So God said, enough is enough. God had a plan to press the restart button on his creation, to wipe out all of the wicked behaviour and start again. And that's where our story starts today. There was one man who God was pleased with and he was called Noah. So God told Noah to build an ark, a huge boat, and take his wife and his children and two of every kind of animal in the world onto the boat. God was going to send a flood and only those on the boat would survive. Now Noah was someone who listened to God's instructions and followed them, so he began to build the ark. The only trouble was, Noah lived in the middle of a desert where there isn't really any rain. So Noah's neighbours started laughing at him. What are you building a boat for, Noah? they asked. God is sending a flood, Noah warned the people, but they didn't listen. So Noah carried on building and when the ark was nearly finished, he and his family collected two of every kind of animal. This could take a while, two of every kind of animal. Do you know how big the ark was? Bigger than a double-decker bus. Bigger than a plane. Bigger than a supermarket. It was the same size as one and a half football fields. Now that's big. But then again, there were a lot of animals. It was a bit of a squeeze and Noah and his family had to settle all the animals. And just as they were doing that, the first drops of rain began to fall. First a drizzle. Then the drizzle became a pitter patter. Then the pitter patter became a splash splash. And then the splash splash became a downpour. And soon the very dry desert began to flood with water and the boat gave a lurch and it was afloat. Well, the rain kept on coming. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. The flood covered the whole earth right up to the tops of the tallest mountains. But Noah and his family and the animals were all safely on board the ark. They had to stay in it for 150 days. That's nearly half a year. Eventually, it looked like the floodwaters were going down, so Noah sent a dove out from the boat to look for some greenery. Eventually, the dove came back with a green twig in its beak, and Noah knew that the floodwaters were going down, and so it was nearly time to let all the animals out again. When the water had fully gone, Noah opened the doors of the boat and everybody got out. God spoke to Noah and said, I promise never to flood the whole earth again. God's special promise was called a covenant and to remind Noah of his covenant, God put a special sign in the sky, a rainbow of all different colours. The world had a new start, but of course it didn't stay perfect for long. But God had a big plan to save the world and he hadn't finished yet. And every time the people saw the rainbow in the sky, it reminded them that God is faithful 
and keeps his promises. The Bible is full of God's promises and they weren't just for the people back then, they're also for us now. God says he'll never leave us. God says he gives us peace. God says he makes us strong when we're feeling weak. Those are just a few of my favourite promises that God gives to us. Let's pray now together and thank God for his faithfulness. Dear God, thank you that you keep your promises to us. Thank you that you are faithful. Thank you that every time we see a rainbow, we can remember the story of Noah and how you were faithful to Noah and how you are just the same when it comes to us. Amen. Now, I wonder how many different ways you can find to make a rainbow. You could draw one or paint one, or you might find some different objects around your house of the different colours and put them together in a rainbow order. And if you see a rainbow this week, you might like to take a photo of it. Once you've made a rainbow or found one in real life, get your grown up to take a picture and send it to me. The email address will be on the screen and I'll do a gallery of rainbows in our next session. So that's all for this week. Join me again next time or come along to one of our in-person services back in the church buildings. Check out our website for more information. Bye bye.